guess the Mets regret taking Jake Jacob the Grom out of the game because yeah, uh, you took him out with what he had like seventy something pitches in this game. You take him out, Philly get that big fifth inning where they score well not fifth inning the uh, eighth inning where they score five runs. And they come out and win this ball game by a score of five to three, coming back down from two to nothing. The Phillies bullpen coming up huge once again. The bullpen goes six and two thirds innings, and they strike out seven batters. The bullpen, and they also give up their first run of the season. But still, the bullpen was a big story in this game because Matt Moore he had a first, he had a good two first innings in his debut for the Phillies, but his final two innings just getting into heavy pitch counts, allowing way too many base runners, and then in that fourth inning where the the uh, Mets just start scoring their two runs in that fourth inning. So, yeah, the beginning of the game for Matt Moore was good. The second half of his game was not the greatest. But the bullpen coming up huge once again. Got Kinsler coming in there, Coonrod, Brogdon, Alvarado, even though he had another roller coaster of a ninth inning. But we still got the victory. And the Phillies just finding a way to come back in that eighth inning. Because, the, yeah, the Mets bullpen wasn't their best, especially late in the ball game allowing so many base runners, allowing the Phillies to continue to get on, defensive mistakes, and just overall just not being, I guess, clutch. And you can also just say, safe to say, too, because it was the Mets' first game of the season because their first series against the Nationals, that was postponed due to COVID release, relations with the Nationals. So this was technically the Mets' first game of the MLB season. So, the, yeah, there's still some rust they got to kink out there. So maybe that's why you saw so many defensive mistakes late in the ball game and that little bit of an implosion by their bullpen. But this was definitely a game that Jacob DeGrom deserved to win. And... <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, he definitely, I think they do definitely regret taking him out of the ballgame because he only had 70-something pitches, and he was great in this game. Jeez, he was fantastic. He had six, six innings pitched, three hits allowed, two walks, seven strikeouts. The ground was on another level tonight, like he is every single ball game, And that does seem to be a common theme for the Grom, where the Mets don't score a lot of runs for him, and they do lose a lot of their games when he comes out of the ball game. So, yeah, I kind of feel bad for him, but hey. It's the first game of the season for the Mets, so they're not going to look that deep into it, I would assume. So, so go into that eighth inning. But a lot of other things to talk about in the during the game. There was a play with Adam Hazley in center field where he misread the ball, where I'm not sure if the wind was a factor or he just completely misread it entirely because he thought the ball was probably going deeper than it was actually hit. So I know a lot of people were trashing Hazley about that, but I kind of think the wind... Maybe it had a factor. I think it was a little bit of a mix of both him misreading the ball and the wind kind of playing a factor into that play as well. But, yeah, the Phillies, the beginning of this game, of course, they're facing Jacob DeGrom. But the first three games of the season against the Atlanta Braves, the offense probably wasn't the best that it could be. But the pitching was just flat out dominant in the first three games of the series against the Atlanta Braves. Now you're going into this series against the New York Mets. You're going with your fourth and fifth starter in Matt Moore and Chase Anderson. Matt Moore didn't have the greatest of outings. Got taken out of the ball game early, and that's the kind of game you where you probably want your offense to pick it up for your fourth and fifth starters. And I guess I'm, I'll give the offense a little bit of a break because you are facing Jake at the Grom, and you came out later in the ball game when the Mets bullpen came in. So I'll give you guys a slide there. You came up, you woke up later in the ball game when it mattered. So won't. Well, push on them that much but I think the offense does need to eventually start to wake up and I'm not going to push into it too deep just because it's only been four games into the season the offense it's gonna it's gonna eventually wake up this offense they scored the fifth most runs last year not worried about them at all they're eventually going to get it going and it's gonna be exciting when the offense eventually does get it going if, if the pitching continues to be as hot as it has been to start the season, especially the bullpen. The bullpen has been fun to watch this season. It's a great change of pace from last year's bullpen, without a doubt. So, like I said, the Mets, they get their first two runs of the ball game in the fourth inning at James McCann getting an RBI single. Then you're getting Jacob DeGrom pulling a Zach Wheeler getting an RBI single for, of his own, make it get 2 nothing Mets. Then, like I said, the Phillies had a couple of chances in the other innings. They just had a hard time getting base runners. They had a hard time score, driving runs in. And yeah, and then also a JT Muto almost had a home run when uh, Jacob DeGrom came out. It was just close right at the warning track. And then also the same thing for Reese Hoskins. He almost had a home run in the first inning, but it bounced like right on the front of the fence and came right back into the field. And he tried to put a triple into it, but I guess he was just being a little too over aggressive on that play. But 
to move on to the eighth inning because that's where most of the juicy bits come from. So Brian Miller comes in the pinch hit for Connor Brogdon. He gets a single. Andrew McCutcheon then works out a walk. Then Reese Hoskins, he gets a single to right field, which bait loads the bases up for Bryce Harper. Then the Mets, they elect to bring in another pitcher, Aaron Loop, who was a former Philly. And the couple of pitches into the, into the at-bat hits Bryce Harper. So automatically forces in a run. And now you got bases loaded for JT Romuto. Swings at the first pitch, single to left field, and it scores one run to tie the ball game up at two. And then you got Alec Bohm coming up, hit swing in at the first pitch as well. The little chopper up the left side. You get the Mets' third baseman, Luis Guillorn, and he completely overthrows McCann at home plate. And it turned into two runs scored for the Phillies, making it 4-2. to two. Reese Hoskins and Bryce Harper scores. Then you get Jay, then you get Didi Gregorius getting a sack fly to right field. I thought it was going off the bat, but it, it, I'll take a sack fly. So he makes it 5-2. to two. So Mets coming up with a lot of boo-boos on the defensive side and their bullpen in the eighth inning just not being clutch. Not at all. And then we get to the Jose Alvarado ninth inning. Man, it was another roller coaster. But he, he got the first two <laughs> outs of the inning with strikeouts to Nimmo and VR. But then Pilar gets a single. Then Lindor gets a single. Then Conforto gets a single, which almost turned into a scary situation because Bryce Harper almost caught it. But then the ball bounced behind them just a little bit. So one run scored off of that play, but it allowed Lindor to get the third base. And then Conforto stayed at first. But then Pete Alonso, oh God, swung at the first pitch of his bat. I thought it was going off the bat, but I guess he didn't get all of it. He got the end of the bat on it. And he got Bryce Harper catching it at the warning track to finish off the ball game. And the Phillies win this one by a score of 5-3. to three. So, like I said, just offense. They woke up when it mattered. Pitching the bullpen especially was really good. If you want to look at the bullpen stats, I think the bullpen went six and two-thirds innings in this game. Like I said, and they struck out seven. So, yeah, the bullpen was good. Kinsler, like I said, Coonrad, Brogdon, Alvarado, even though he had that roller coaster of an inning. Just a, another good performance by the bullpen. Once again, if you want to look at the lineup for tonight's game, Andrew McCutcheon goes one for three. Roman Quinn came in as a pinch runner during that eighth inning, and he scored a run off of one of those plays. Reese Hoskins goes two for four in this game, so Reese is off, his bat is off to a hot start to the season. Bryce Harper, he goes 0 for one and scores a run because he had two walks in this game. Bryce Harper did walk a lot. The Grom kind of did not want to throw to Bryce Harper today. JT Romuto, he goes one for four. Alec Bohm goes one for four. Didi Gregorius goes one for three. Gene Segura goes a little bit quiet in this game, goes 0 for four. Adam Hazley didn't have himself a good game. He goes 0 for three. Then Matt Moore goes 0 for one. And then the pitch hitters, you got Brian Miller getting that one single in the eighth inning, which allowed him to score a run. So, yeah, just a overall good baseball game. I would say it's a good baseball game. You saw that pitcher performance by Jacob DeGrom. You saw the Phillies bullpen in action, and then you saw the Phillies come back in that eighth inning. Just a, it wasn't your ideal baseball game, definitely not. You definitely would want the Phillies offense to wake up a little bit earlier in the ball game, but hey, they, they woke up in the eighth inning when it mattered. So I'm not going to overreact that much. <laughs> and yeah, the bullpen, like I said, has been a very nice change of pace for these first four games of the season. Very nice change of pace, only allowing one run in your first four games. So it's, it's nice to see. It's very nice to see, especially when Matt Moore didn't have his best stuff to start this ball game. So we're going to see how it works tomorrow when Chase Anderson is on the mound. Is he going to have a little bit of a, a sluggish outing, or is he going to be a little bit better than Matt Moore, give the bullpen a little bit of a break? I would hope Chase goes at least five innings tomorrow because that'll give the bullpen a little bit of a rest. Even though some guys did get some rest in this ball game, you got, you got, uh, man, I just drew a blank right there. You got Hector Neris getting a break. You got Archie Bradley getting a break from tonight's game, even though he technically, I think, was supposed to come out in the ninth inning, but they'd elect to go with Jose Alvarado. So, yeah, just like I said, not your ideal way to, for a ball game, but I will take it. <laughs> So the Phillies, they start off 4-0 on the season. And also some other things you get to see, Francisco Lindor in his first regular season appearance in a Mets uniform. He goes 1-4 for four today. He's only hit coming in later in that ballgame in the ninth inning. So, like I said, and Lindor coming off of that 
fresh new contract where he's the highest paid shortstop in the league. Just, man, I can't imagine when a lot of the other free agent shortstops go on the market this year. Guys like Story, guys like uh, Corey Seager, and there's definitely a, lot, a bunch of other players that are going to go on the market as well, but especially with those two guys with... Man, like, with, with Lindor getting the money that he got, imagine how much those guys are going to bargain for. And Lindor is the best shortstop in the game, but just imagine when those guys go on the market. And I think Correa is going to be on the market as well. So it's especially going to be a big, big uh, free agent class next year for shortstops, especially. So it's going to be interesting, but that's way far down the road. Getting lo way too into the future there. So what are your thoughts on this game, everyone? What are your thoughts on the Phillies' performance? What are your thoughts on Jacob DeGrom? Phillies coming back in the eighth inning. The Phillies' bullpen being a, a little bit more exciting than it was last year. So don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section, as always. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the Painted Lines, which I am a part of. Their links will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links to the Flyer Up Podcast merchandise website, and also for Flyers Nitty Gritty. They will be in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, as always. And I will see you next time.